Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a test in microbiology called fluid thioglycolate media, or FTM. You'll see it sometimes abbreviated as. And this is a test that specifically determines an organism's aerotolerance. So what is aerotolerance? Aerotolerance is basically just an organism's ability to live or survive at a particular level of oxygen. And so some bacteria survive or like to live at high levels of oxygen, some like to live at low levels of oxygen, and then there's some where there's a little bit in between, okay, little gray area there. And so what we do is we have a test tube, okay, this is where our media is, our FTM, and towards the top of the media in all of these, the top has high oxygen levels. The bottom of the media has low oxygen levels. And so what happens is we basically create an oxygen gradient. Okay, so as we go towards the top of the tube, the oxygen level increases. Therefore, the top of the broth is going to be an aerobic environment. So what is aerobic? Aerobic means high in oxygen. Okay, so aerobic environments are like the environments that you're sitting in right now. There's plenty of oxygen to live because we are aerobic creatures. We need oxygen to live. Okay, so up at the top, usually about the top third of the tube is going to be aerobic. The bottom of it is going to be anaerobic. Okay, anaerobic means little oxygen. And technically, it's not no oxygen. There is small amounts. But compared to the top, it's a low amount of oxygen near the bottom of the tube. And so that's going to be your anaerobic environment. And so basically, uh, if we were to predict where we would find anaerobic bacteria, some bacteria that likes oxygen, we would expect it to be towards the top of the tube. Okay? Whereas if there were an organism that did not like oxygen, meaning they were an anaerobic bacteria, we might expect them to be towards the bottom. And so what we can do is we can look at the various growth patterns in fluid thioglycolate media, and we can characterize the aerotolerance. And so that's what we're going to do here. Let's just talk briefly about this. The first type of organism is called an obligate aerobe. So first of all, this tells you a couple of things. One, it's aerobic. So this particular bacteria likes oxygen. And obligate means it has to have oxygen, or it has to have whatever the word is after it. If you're obligated to do something, that means you have to do it. So in other words, this means that these organisms have to have oxygen to live. And considering that the top of these tubes is where you have high oxygen, you would expect to, fly, to find obligate aerobes at the top of the tube. Really the top third of it, and then the bottom two-thirds, you would not expect to see any organisms at all. Okay? So this is how you would find obligate aerobes at the top. Our next kind is obligate anaerobes, and sometimes you'll see this as strict anaerobes. These are organisms that are obligated to live in an anaerobic environment, meaning without oxygen. And so uh, these organisms, which are not super common, you would expect to find at the bottom of the tube. Okay? Sometimes you'll see them occupying as much as the bottom two-thirds, so starting kind of at this level where my mouse is and down. But the point is, is you're going to see them at the bottom of the tube. And this is because most obligate anaerobes, or strict anaerobes, will die if you put them in the presence of oxygen. Um, a good example of an organism like this would be Klebsiella. These are uh, like nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the soil. There's actually mechanisms that those cells have to rid themselves of oxygen because if there's a lot of oxygen, it'll kill them. Okay? So this is for obligate anaerobes, the bottom of the tube. And we have something called facultative anaerobes. This is kind of confusing because you say, well, it's an anaerobe, but there's more growth at the top. Okay? So here's the deal with a facultative anaerobe. By default, uh, they'll be anaerobic, and they can live in an anaerobic environment. But if you put oxygen there, they will tend to prefer that oxygen. I think the example I gave in class is, let's say you got two restaurants that you like. You like Subway and Jimmy John's, two sandwich places, right? And let's say you go to a town where there's only a Jimmy John's. Well, you're going to go to that Jimmy John's because there's no Subway, right? You're going to exclusively go to that Jimmy John's. But then if you go to another town where there's a Subway and a Jimmy John's, you might have a tendency to most of the time go to the Subway. You might go to the, the Jimmy John's a little bit, but you're going to go to the Subway more because that tends to be your favorite of those two. 
So these bacteria can live in an anaerobic environment towards the bottom, but they actually prefer an aerobic environment. So when you see facultative anaerobes, you will see a large cluster of growth at the top where it's aerobic, and then it will kind of taper down as you go towards the bottom because they do not like anaerobic as much as they like aerobic. Okay, But this sort of uh, cluster towards the top and tapering going down is characteristic of these type of organisms. Okay, and then the last kind we're going to cover in our lab are what are called microaerophiles. So microaerophiles, so micro means small, and aerophile means it likes oxygen or likes aerobic environments. Now these organisms do not grow right at the top like you would expect for obligate aerobes. They're going to be a little bit down, but still in the aerobic area. Okay, and they're going to be a kind of a, th a thin band or a thin sliver and you're going to see them just at that level. And it usually is not going to be right at the top. It's going to be a little bit down. So they live in a narrow window of oxygen concentrations. And it's, it's, it's not a huge amount of oxygen, but it's a little bit less than the maximum in the tube. And so you're going to see them something like this. Okay, And there will be none of them in the anaerobic regions of the tube. All right, so now that we've seen an artist's rendition of these, let's actually look at some real tubes that you might actually see in the lab. So this first one, which is actually B, since I omitted A, this is an obligate or strict anaerobe, right? Now, in the previous picture for obligate anaerobes, they only showed bacteria at the very bottom. In reality, for an obligate anaerobe, you will probably see uh, the bacteria growing in the bottom two-thirds of the tube. Really, when you look at FTM, this media, the top one-third is the... Uh, region that has oxygen, a lot of it, the bottom two-thirds is more the anaerobic region. So you will actually see growth normally in the bottom two-thirds. Notice there's absolutely none in the aerobic region of this uh, broth, but only in the bottom two-thirds. That's characteristic of an obligate anaerobe, also called strict anaerobe. C right here, this is characteristic of facultative anaerobe. Right? Remember for a facultative anaerobe, we have a cluster of growth at the top and then it kind of tapers off going down. The way I like to think of what a facultative anaerobe looks like is it looks like a tornado. Okay, if you've ever, hopefully you haven't been too close to a tornado, but you see here the growth at the top covers the entire diameter of the tube and then it gets thinner as it goes towards the bottom. Okay, um, and it looks almost like a whirlpool jet going down towards the bottom of the tube. This is a giveaway that you have a facultative anaerobe. And a lot of times it won't hit the very top. Sometimes it will. But notice it's actually displaced a little bit down from the top. But you have this large growth right here that covers the diameter of the tube and then it tapers off going down like a tornado. Okay? That's a facultative anaerobe. This one right here for D, this one is definitely a microaerophile. So this is a microaerophile because remember for a microaerophile you're going to have a band that's a little bit uh, down from the top, but it's going to occupy a narrow window of oxygen concentration. So again, we don't have growth up here at the very top, but we have a, a, a band right here that's still in the aerobic zone. It's usually going to be towards the bottom of the aerobic zone, but again, this is a small concentration of oxygen um, that's still classified as aerobic. And so when you see a band like this, that is a microaerophile. Okay? And then the other type that we're going to have is obligate aerobe. So obligate aerobe, again, you see here we have growth pretty much in the top one-third of this tube. Um, again, if you were to overlap this tube right here with the one for B over here on the left, you would see that uh, the cutoff point right here. Above that, we have obligate aerobes, and below that line, we have obligate anaerobes. Okay? But E is going to be an obligate aerobe because we only have growth in the top one-third of this tube. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully now you understand a little bit about fluid thioglycolate media. It is a test that allows you to determine the aerotolerance of a bacteria. Right? Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.